Greetings, welcome to today's session. In this session, we'll be looking at question four, which is worth six marks. And it is based on finding the length of the curve between the points zero and zero, and pi over four, and lean of square root of two. They furthermore give us a hint that the integral of sec x dx is what you can see there. So we need to first figure out exactly what is expected of us. So if you look carefully, when they say they want the length of the curve, essentially what they're speaking about is what we call arc length. And we know that the arc length of a curve is given by especially an explicit curve arc length will be given by the integral from alpha to beta, the square root of 1 plus the derivative of y with respect to x all squared dx. This is how you find the arc length of an explicit curve. So what is second important is for us to figure out the lower limit. What is alpha going to be? also to figure out the upper limit what is our beta going to be equal to so i'm going to use my points to be able to figure out those limits so if i look carefully i'm given a point rather what we should remember is that points are always in terms of x and y so if you look at my equation there x i know it will always be equal to x but my y has been given to be lean of sec x like that so when i look at the points i can see that one of them is zero and zero so what i should ask myself is what did i do to the x for me to move from x to zero and what did i do to the y component what x did i put for me to get to zero so if you look carefully the x part is the easy comparison so I'll just make a note here that comparing the x components is easier. So you find your answer instantly because what you must have done to x for you to move down to zero, you must have just equated your x to zero. That is what you did so let's go to the other one just to confirm your answer if you put zero here sec of zero we know it's it's going to give us one and then lean of one is zero so that's how you can confirm your answer so let's look at the second point where we have x lean of sec x like that so that x is zero is going to be our lower limit it's going to be the lower limit or the lower integration limit so when we look at the second point it has been given as pi over four and lean of square root of two like that so I need to ask myself, what did I do to x to get pi over 4? And what did I do to this? What did I do to x for me to get to that? So when you look carefully, comparing the x's is easier still in this case. So you should be able to see that what we did there was just to set x to be pi over 4. In this one becomes our upper integration limit okay so now that we have these essentially we have our alpha and our beta we can go and find what we need inside the integral inside the square root if you look carefully we need the derivative of y so i have lean of sec x so if i derive this at this point you should know that the derivative of lean of anything becomes one of 
1 over what is inside the lean, then multiply it by the derivative of the inner function by chain rule. So if you look carefully, our d1 dx, dy dx will be the derivative of sec, simply sec x, tan x, and this is divided by sec x. So if you look carefully, we'll be left with tan x like that. So now I can go to my integral and start doing the work. So remember that S is also a symbol that denotes the arc length. Okay. So our S is going to be the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of the square root of. If you look at our equation, the previous page, we should have dy dx and dy dx, which has found to be tan x there squared dx so if you look carefully at what we have i want you to remember something so that we can simplify this i need you to remember that one plus tan squared x is simply sec squared x so if you look at what we will have there it will simply be the integral from zero to pi over 4 square root of that will be sec squared x dx which will just become the integral from 1 sorry not from 1 but from 0 to pi over 4 when you take the square root of sec squared x it will be left as sec x dx so now if you look at our hint this has been given so that's why i'm going to say check the hint so when you look at the hint here you will see that we have been given what that becomes so our s will essentially become lean of sec x plus tan x and then plus c and this will be evaluated between pi over 4 and 0 so i'm going to attempt to make some space and we finish this problem on this page okay so let's go ahead so i need you i need to remind you that our sec sec x is simply 1 over cos x so be always reminded of that so which means when we put in pi over 4 so i'll have lean of sec of pi over 4 so this is the same as 1 over cos of pi over 4 then plus tan of pi over 4 like that then minus lean of sec of 0 then plus tan of 0 like that so if you look carefully you will see that our s will be we have lean of if you think carefully sec of pi over 4 our cos of pi over 4 is the same as 1 over square root 2, so this will just be square root of 2. Plus tan of pi over 4 is simply 1. Then minus lean of sec of 0, that is 1, plus tan of 0, which is 0. So by now we should all know that lean of 1 is essentially 0. So this means that our final answer the arc length will simply be the lean of the square root of 2 plus 1. So that is our final answer. Therefore, the arc length or the length is simply the lean of square root of 2 plus 1 units. Great. I hope this makes sense. 
and it helps your understanding of concepts which are centered around finding the arc length of an explicit curve. In closing, this is the most important formula on this session. That gives you the arc length of an explicit curve. There's a different one for a parametric curve and there's also a different one for a polar curve. So make sure that you know all of them, but keep this equation in mind as you approach your assessments or studying in general.